Hey folks, Lindsay Huddleston back in the building, another SPS Monday Motivation. Going to get started in just a few moments on this March 8th, 2021. March Madness is in effect. Happy to be here with you guys. 0700, about to get it popping. Let's get it started. Hope you all had a great weekend. Restful, exciting fruitful, productive, enjoyable, memorable, any of those adjectives to describe your weekend. I had a great weekend. Got a couple eyes on me. I appreciate that. Feeling like Tupac right now. Uh, without the death wish, that is. Shout out to Pop. Want to say good morning, everybody. Checking in for this Monday Motivation. Dan Ringo in the building like clockwork, my guy. Dan Ringo, you're part of this Monday Motivation. Dan Ringo uh, is the big homie, no doubt. Uh, I want to talk about Dan Ringo. I also want to talk about another young man as well. I see Michelle Mimi Watkins saying, good morning, Michelle. For the first time in the history of the SPS Monday Motivation, somebody was on before you. But that's my guy, Dan Ringo. Dan Ringo had a heads up because he and I had a very amazing conversation, as we always do just a couple of days ago. But before I want to talk about Dan, I want to lay the storyline out for today's Monday Motivation called Boundaries. That's right, Boundaries. Several years ago, when I was an undergraduate student at Western Michigan University, Dan and Michelle, um, this is after I met Dan Ringo back in our neighborhood on the west side of Detroit. Shout out to Henry Ford. Dan um, was the ambassador of the west side community. So when you would come to the outdoor basketball court that had all these holes in the backboard that were not for air ventilation or circulation, they were the result of... uh, bullet holes because that's how hot the hood was dan held that down he used his charisma he used his charm he used his intellect and his wit to help us navigate so when i came from a neighboring hood if you will from seven mile and evergreen over to his hood to get that hoop game going on dan was getting it in out there hooping too uh there was a mutual respect but dan was the big homie he was much older and he saw how the wolves could be very aggressive to the newcomers who were very talented and sometimes you know when you go into a different neighborhood for those who haven't had that urban experience or just haven't had that experience you know uh it could be deadly let's get right to it but dan being a man wise beyond his years saw that and he navigated that and i always want to thank him and emulate him and going forward into high school henry ford he was the king of the lunchroom go to the back of the table he beating on the table and dan's the man imparting wisdom we got a chance to talk a few days ago And uh, he was very uh, gracious in sharing with the world, if you will, via social media, some things I shared with him from my life experience that were very similar to his that resonated with him. Sometimes our friend stories resonate with us and they help us. But that's the point of us being vulnerable. But I'll get back to Dan in a second. I want to go back to Western Michigan University where my guy Jimmy Sanders came in contact with him. Jimmy was the most hated. That's because he was out there getting it in. He was a young man that was wise beyond his years and he always reminds me of the advice I gave. I told him then, haters go hate. (laughs) That's what they do. That's their job. But just like things that I shared with Dan resonated with him, the same thing happened with Jimmy. So here's my point before I get into the topic itself. It's important to show vulnerability with your friends. It's important to show vulnerability to people you care about. I know you want to be careful so things don't happen and hurt you. But the whole point about the boundaries that I'm going to get into is that because I was able to pour into Jimmy decades ago, not years, decades ago at Western Michigan University, Jimmy and his growth and his maturity has been able to pour into me. And just why Dan poured into me years ago, Dan poured into me years ago. And my growth and maturity, I was able to pour into him. So it goes full circle. Maybe that's why I was listening to Pusha T and Ty Dolla Sign Circles before we got on this morning. Maybe you should listen to the instrumental, but it bangs. So here's what I'm getting at. Our topic today, and I'll bring in um, the gentleman that I spoke of as we go on, is about boundaries. What is a boundary? A boundary, if you look at the screen, is uh, we won't go with the ticker. We'll go right here. A boundary is a limit or a space between you and the other person. A clear place where you begin and the other person ends. Like, Lindsay, this is elementary. What are you talking about? Let me give you a visual. It can be like this. Hey, this is the line. Don't cross that line. And sometimes that line is an imaginary line. Or it can be like this. And this is the discussion that Dan and I were having. You see this long plank roll, excuse me, this roll 
uh, that's a boundary. It's kind of like probably a county line boundary or some discussion that was had between parties to say, hey, don't cross this line. But what Dan and I talked about as he gets ready to launch a new project and all the things he has going on uh, in his world in a positive way, when you make this boundary line, when you draw this line in the sand, or in this particular case, when you take those two by fours or those stakes and you hit it in the ground, you don't come back to this line every day checking to see if somebody crossed the line because you set a boundary. This is a very evident boundary. And when you set these boundaries internally, you need to be able to walk away, not worried about will somebody understand and get it. Let me talk a little bit more. And the information I'm getting about boundaries comes from Psychology Today, a great resource you know that you can use. Uh, boundaries can be physical or emotional, and they can range from being loose to rigid, with healthy boundaries often falling somewhere in between. So I'm not saying you have to have these boundaries that you can't move off of. That Hey, this is it. You were late and I don't want to hear it. Now, you can say that after a time and time. That's the case. And I don't want to get into that because that's getting into semantics. But what I am getting at is for me, and I want to thank Jimmy for talking to me about boundaries because I was feeling bad internally because I got to a point in my life, particularly in my business, that I set some boundaries that I became cold hearted on. Cold hearted, like, hey, this is it. And I don't want to hear it. And I felt bad that I was okay with setting these boundaries that were so cold hearted. I'll repeat that. I felt bad that I was so okay with setting these boundaries. But I didn't realize until my brother Jimmy poured into me and said, man, you got to set boundaries. You have to set boundaries. And if you don't, you're going to get some resentment in the end. Like, why are you mad? Because I made a mistake of letting you get too close. What else can we talk about? Learning to show compassion. And kindness to yourself is a crucial way of setting healthy boundaries. See, this is self-care. When you set a boundary for yourself and for other people, you are practicing self-care. Because if that person crosses that boundary, you're going to be hurt. If you allow a person to cross that boundary, you're going to have this internal conflict. Let's talk about it. While boundaries are often psychological, emotional boundaries can be physical. We talked about that. But also, I want to say, healthy boundaries are a crucial component of self-care. That's because in our work and in our personal relations, poor boundaries leads to resentment, anger, and burnout. Poor boundaries lead to resentment, anger, and burnout. So you sitting there mad at somebody for coming too close to you, whether it's physically or emotionally, but the onus is on you because you didn't set the proper boundary. You had this idea, you wanted to, but you played around with it. You probably set a boundary like this. You probably set this kind of boundary where them toes can easily cross over where you needed to set this one. Well, I'll go a little bit further. I'll take it to something. Dan, you remember this? Don't cross the gun line, boss. Huh? Let's talk about that. We all remember the movie Life. Shout out to Eddie Murphy and the theatrical experience that Coming to America 2 was. I'm a big fan of it, Dan. I saw on your social media you was big on it, too. Remember this part in life? Talk about the gun line. The gun line was an imaginary boundary that was set. And in this case, even though it was imaginary, the results of crossing the gun line were life and death. If you cross that gun line, it was life or death. <laughs> Dan Ringo said, don't cross it. Don't cross the gun line. If you cross that gun line, it was life or death. And you knew that. They made everybody aware on day one when they came to the prison camp. He said, here is the gun line. It goes around this perimeter. It was imaginary. You couldn't touch it. You couldn't feel it. You couldn't smell it. But everybody was in agreement that it was there. And the consequences were deadly. So this is another message to people. To you, uh, 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 constant, uh, 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 consistent uh, gun line, habitual gun line crosses, as Dave Chappelle would say in the, uh, you know, the Eddie Murphy skit with uh, Rick James, H habitual line crosser. A lot of y'all are some habitual boundary crossers. Now, I'm talking to a different segment. I'm not talking to my people who I'm telling you to put boundaries up. I'm talking to the people who all you look to do because of your mental health challenges, I said it, or because of your unresolved issues, because of your ego, uh, because of your uh, 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 relationship issues, all you want to do is cross people boundaries. 
And you want to cross people boundaries, particularly those who don't have hard set in stone boundaries like a Dan Ringo may have, a Jimmy Sanders may have, or a Michelle Mimi Watkins. And I say these people's names because I know their character. As cool and as sweet as they may be in a good way, you don't want to cross them. But you're all out here crossing these people boundaries for your own shits and giggles. Excuse my language, but you had to get the point. So what happens is you run the risk of something deadly happen. That's right. Michelle said respect boundaries. You know, Michelle, they said when you give a presentation and you want to tap into people's power source, you respond to the things they respond to. So I was just right when I told you, Michelle Watkins, don't mess around and disrespect her boundary. So this is also some information to you who may not be looking, listening to Lindsay's motiv motivation to say, hey, I want to work on my own boundaries. But this is for you who are out here disrespecting people's boundaries. Now, let me get back to the matter at hand. It is very important for you to set healthy boundaries, guys, because I realize that when I set those boundaries, man, I'm in a better situation for myself. You see how that boundary in this image right here stops the toxicity. It stops the tidal wave. It stops the negativity because there was a boundary set. And you got to think, what boundaries do I need to have to be able to go forward? Shout out to my guy, Kevin Marshall. I'm going to be heading up to Saginaw home of the Bridgeport Bearcats, to check him out. He is the SBS team of the week. Team of the week. Brother Kevin Marshall's been doing an excellent job in this community, not only as a coach, but as a community leader. And, brother, I appreciate your support of SBS. We talk about setting boundaries, brother, and I know you can understand that. Sometimes we got to set boundaries, especially dealing with these young people. Michelle knows with New Breed Tech Track Club. Dan knows when he's out here uh, uh, spitting game to these young people because uh, Dan the type of pull up on you in the big body and spit some game at you. And also with Kevin, out here totally rooted in his community, trying to let these other people understand. Now, to that point, there are a lot of young people who struggle with boundaries because maybe they don't have them at home. You know, maybe they don't have them in situations. I had somebody um, who's clearly having a mental health issue yesterday at the store. I won't go into great detail, but they were struggling with boundaries. But that seven mile in me had to help them get them boundaries right. Because after I had some choice words to them, they say, oh, I'm having a bad day. Yeah, okay. But you got to let them know. So what can I say to you guys to not just amplify things, but give you something to work with? Think to yourself what bothers you. Think to yourself what things irk you at your job, in your relationship, wherever it may be. Think to yourself, what are those things? Thank you. What are those things? He said, thank you. This is Kevin talking. And if we don't, then as adults, we fail them. Come on, Kevin. Come on, Kevin. Talk to him, Coach. Coach Marshall just said, that if we do not help our young people set boundaries, we fail them. So maybe that needs to be your motivation. Maybe that's your motivation as a supervisor, as a coach, as a parent, as a friend. You say, man, if I don't help my man and set a boundary for him, I'm not really his friend. You know what I'm saying? If my nose is dirty, man, we got to be cool enough. You got to say, Lynn, you need to get at it. We may joke at it later. So I'm trying to give you different reasons to motivate you because let's talk about what it is. Setting boundaries can be uncomfortable. I'm not going to just come in and say it's cool. I told you that the only motivation behind this was I felt uncomfortable about how comfortable I was being set in the boundary. I said, dang, man, you was cold with that one. So there is an emotional attachment to that. But what I'm telling you is to think on it, dwell on it. What do I need to do and use the appropriate words and actions to better set these boundaries? So before we get out of here, I want to go back to these images. You know, what kind of boundary are you setting? Is it that imaginary boundary so somebody can cross with ease? Is it the one that's set in stone and quite evident? And to this point about this image, and again, shout out my guy, Dan Ringo. When you set these boundaries, you walk away. You don't come back every day checking on the boundary. Did somebody cross the boundary? No, that boundary is out there. Because whether you got a deadly gun line, you let it be known that you can't cross the gun line. And for those who violate your boundaries, there need to be some consequences. Now, I got former military guys out here. I know my guy Dan Ringo is a former uh, airman in the Air Force. I know my guy Coach Marshall, a former uh, Army man. I'm a former Marine. Hey, we understand. I ain't telling you to go uh, fist the cups and put it on people like that physically. However, however, there needs to be some consequences. Because guess what? I'll go back to this. When you don't provide those consequences, it ends up bringing resentment to you. Right. If you don't set those boundaries, you end up being the one that's being hurt. Huh? What did I say right here? Healthy boundaries are crucial. While boundaries are often psychological, or emotional boundaries can be also physical, you know, but I want to talk about these healthy boundaries are crucial because when we don't do that, 
We don't set that boundary. We had this poor rotten. It's gonna lead to what? What does it say on the bottom of the screen? Resentment, anger, and burnout. Because we didn't set a boundary, and now this person is out of pocket. Now we feel in a certain way. Now before I get up out of here, folks, I want to thank our sponsors. If it wasn't for the Ratio Williams Foundation, uh, with the support he's given, I wouldn't be able to be as strong and as powerful with this message. If it wasn't for Gilead. You know, uh, sciences, we wouldn't be able to have such a large reach and be out here. And also Dick Sporting Good. So I want to shout out our sponsors and all that they're doing. So with this, guys, as I keep going into the 13th minute of this Monday motivation, uh, I hope that you can get something from it. Go back and listen to it. Play it in your car. Play it in your ride. And I just really want you to get into a subliminal state to think about, okay, what has really bothered me? Because sometimes we show up to situations one time and we can't even argue. We can't even articulate what the issue is, but we know we don't feel right. And then what happens is the slightest thing will trigger us. So find out what those issues are and find out what healthy boundaries you can set for yourself. And just because you set a boundary once doesn't mean that that person's going to respect it. Like I said, they may be a habitual line crosser, habitual boundary buster. You know, I'm making up terms, but I think it's hitting home. And if that's the case, you got to think about what do I have to do? Your boundary may have to extend to human resources at your job. Your boundary may have to be a note you write to somebody, a text you send, a phone call you have, a FaceTime. But handle that. Handle that. Because my thing is, if they got the problem, it shouldn't have to weigh on you all day. Sometimes we carry around with people problems like a sack of potatoes, man. Like a sack of potatoes. Remember when I was doing corporate lobbying for Walmart and we were trying to get these stores in Chicago, we had this open air market. And I'm going to wrap up with this. And we sold all these goods just to let the community know what Walmart could sell at the time, you know. But the one thing they left behind, the one thing nobody took, the one thing that was there was the bag of potatoes. These five-pound bags of potatoes that we couldn't understand. And they said, well, what's wrong? People in the inner city don't like potatoes? What's wrong? And we had to go to somebody with some wisdom, like when I go to Dan Ringo. We had to go to somebody, what's up, Wu Pang? Killing over there at Henry Ford College, my God. Got to get up with you soon. Talking about these boundaries. So we went to a wise mother of the community. I said, ma'am, can you help us understand why nobody's taking these potatoes? She said, baby, I can't carry them potatoes on the bus. We said, wow, the potatoes were too much to carry, man. The potatoes were too heavy. You see, we carrying around other people's burdens because we ain't setting boundaries. You got to set you some boundaries. So you think today after this Monday motivation of what your boundaries need to be. And if you don't got it, if you can't just jump out there and do it, you think of a clever way of how you go set this boundary because you don't need to have that resentment. You don't need to have that anger and you don't need to have that burnout. So with that, hitting the 15 minute mark, I want to thank you guys for supporting the SPS Monday Motivation. Shout out to my guy, Coach Kevin Marshall. going to be at the Saginaw today uh, to check out the Bearcats and to support them and sit down with him and you know have a word or two with him and, and let him share his message from his perspective. Uh, I want to thank everybody who stopped in today, Dan Ringo, Michelle, Mimi Watkins, all the time, number love, and my guy, James Wu Payne, give it up. And I shout out to my guy, Jimmy Sanders, for uh, blessing me with a word years after I was able to bless him. And uh, shout out to my guy, Dan Ringo, for looking out for the young homie years ago. And uh, even now to this day, we can keep it going. Love it too, bro. I see you, Jimmy. Shout out to Jimmy Sanders. All right, with that, we see you guys. Have a great day. Have a great week. Have a great month. Have a great year. Make it happen, baby. SPS loves you. Peace.